Today we're reviewing the Blue Advance 5.0 Android smartphone. The Blue Advance 5.0 is one of the least expensive unlocked phones on the market and is sold contract free in the US for about $50 to $70 depending on when or where you buy it. As its name suggests, the Advance has a 5 inch IPS display on the front with a sleek metallic bezel around it. The display has a resolution of 480 by 854 pixels which is rather low by today's smartphone standards. Nevertheless, it's surprisingly crisp, well saturated saturated and all the apps and text look sharp enough to use. More about the screen's performance in a minute. There's a front facing camera embedded into the top right hand portion of the screen and a 5 megapixel camera and flash embedded in the removable cover on the back. The back cover has a textured leather like finish which gives you a good grip on the phone and makes the phone look a whole lot more expensive than it actually is. The Advance 5.0 is available in two different colors, black and white. I'll leave links to both versions below. The speaker grill is also embedded into the bottom of the back cover. The Blue Advance 5.0 is a quad band GSM phone, so it'll work with any GSM carrier on the planet. In the US, it'll work with AT&T, T-Mobile, and a few other GSM carriers. It won't work with Verizon or Sprint, so that's something to keep in mind. Removing the rear cover reveals two SIM card slots, a micro SIM card slot on the left and a full size SIM card slot on the right. If you plan to use a nano SIM card, you'll need a nano SIM to full size SIM adapter. Having two SIM cards lets you you use two different SIM cards with two different phone numbers on the same phone. You can switch between numbers and even assign different numbers for calling, texting, or data usage. You'll also find a micro SD card slot on the left. The phone comes with just four gigabytes of built-in memory, so adding a micro SD card expands the phone's storage capacity by up to 64 gigabytes. The 800 milliamp hour battery is removable, which is pretty rare these days. The battery life is decent and should get you through most of the day, but having a removable battery battery means you can always buy spares and swap them out if you run out of juice. The phone has a metallic volume rocker and power button on the right hand edge. There's a micro USB port on the top edge with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack next to it. The phone also surprisingly performs very well. During my tests I never noticed it hang, lag or freeze up when loading something or browsing the web. And a lot of this is because Blue has chosen to get rid of all the useless bloatware that normally kills a phone's performance. The only noticeable bloatware was the Amazon Kindle app, the Amazon App Store app, and the Blue Help app. In fact, it's such a clean installation that I even had to download the YouTube app from the App Store. It also runs a very lightly skinned version of Android Lollipop 5.1, and this also helps to keep the phone running smoothly. When it comes to video from sites like YouTube, the playback was flawless. The screen performed much better than expected, and the audio quality was pretty decent, as you can see in this clip. When using the phone outdoors, even with the screen brightness set to 100%, the screen was usable, but it would have helped if it was a bit brighter. But again, at this price point, I'm definitely not complaining. The rear camera took decent 5 megapixel pictures. The manual focus system was a bit sloppy and erratic, but you could take decent enough pictures to share on Facebook or Instagram. The video quality from the rear facing camera was pretty awful, as expected. It's technically 720p HD video, but looks more or less like 480p video with pretty poor color reproduction, sharpness, or exposure. I hate to harp on the price, but at this price, you're probably not going to get much better quality. And this is a test of the front facing camera, and I'm outdoors with a reasonably noisy and windy environment around, and um, this is a test of the front facing camera just to see how both the front microphone and the camera itself uh, performs. It performs reasonably well, it's good enough for Skype or any other form of uh, video calling and it's also great to take selfies. So who do I think should buy this phone? Well, if you're looking for a new smartphone and aren't looking to get locked into a two-year contract with your carrier, this is a great option. For example, if you're already in a carrier contract and you broke your phone or lost your phone and need an inexpensive replacement, this will work just fine. This is really a phone for folks who want a basic smartphone that makes calls, sends texts, and allows you to browse the web. Considering its price, it's 
it's a pretty decent phone. However, if you're looking for a better quality camera, I'd recommend spending the extra money and getting the Motorola Moto E. I'll leave links to both these phones below, so feel free to check them out. And if you'd like to see a review of the Moto E, leave a comment below. Hope this video was useful. If it was, please hit like and subscribe for more reviews. Thanks for watching and see you next time.